Call to order. This is the 13th regular meeting of the 2009-2010 Common Council. As is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. People have been known to achieve more as a result of working with others rather than against them. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clionis. Here. Montemayor. Excused. Rinfleisch. Here. Zurich. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Vu. Here. And Wangaman. Here. Fifteen present. We have a quorum. If everybody can please stand and Alderman Rinfleisch will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have approval of the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. No discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there's an email sent from Alderman Bourne to the mayor and to the city clerk advising, giving formal notice of his resignation as common council president, effective. 92809. Motion to accept and file. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion. If I may speak first. Um, Alderman, President Boren, uh, you've done a phenomenal job being president of this council. Uh, you and I were elected to the to the council at the same time. And uh, you've been a, uh, a great ally. And luckily, you're still here on the council, even though you're, you're stepping down in the uh, position of president. You're, uh, you're an honorable man. And I'm proud to have had you as the president of the council. And hopefully, in the future, you can be again. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Jim. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanted to follow up on those comments after serving two years as president. I know the, the challenges that that job has. And Jim, I thought you. You executed it like a pro, and we're going to miss you as president, and thanks for your service. Mm -hmm. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I echo the statements and sentiments regarding uh, uh, former President Bourne. Uh, to, to Jim's credit, not only was he a tireless worker for this city, but uh, as vice president of the council, he he reached out and brought me in on a, all the issues going on so that uh, so that we could work together as a team and I'm proud to say that I was part of Jim's team. Thank you, President Kisha. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. It's been my privilege to serve with Jim in the 4th District. Um, uh, I wouldn't know half I need to know to be prepared for these meetings if it wasn't for Jim and the communication that we have. Um, I, I'm going to miss you with your leadership and appreciate everything you've done for the Common Council. Thank you, Joe. We have a motion to accept and file. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Confirmation of the mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your confirmation to the Business Improvement District Rick Scroggins, Mike Vandersteen, and Darren Bricko, appointed 92109 for terms expiring 914 2012. Signed by the mayor. Uh, motion to confirm the mayor's appointments. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion, do we have a roll call, please? 
Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleunis. Aye. Rinflesh. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. And Wangaman. Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. More confirmations. Attorney McLean? No? That's all? That's all I've got. Okay. We will move on to mayor's announcements. First of all, I believe that uh, Alderman Bowers, did you have something to say, sir? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I'd like to thank the, the members of uh, this council for greetings and the cards that they sent me while I was in, uh, in the hospital and also to my constituents throughout the city. Uh, I'd like to re tell you that everything turned out all right and I'm ready to go. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, one announcement this evening. This comes from Alderperson Kittleson. Um, on Saturday, October 17th from 7 o'clock a.m. to 11 o'clock a.m. at the YMCA, there is the March of the Pink Brigade, which is a two to four mile run walk. It says wear something pink and this is to benefit the Sheboygan County Cancer Care Fund. So if anybody can be there for that event, it is a great event. On a more somber note, <coughs> members of the Common Council, please accept my statement that my words this evening are sincere are genuine and are made with the sole purpose of putting recent unfortunate events behind us in order to regain the ability to move our city forward. In early July, a cell phone video was secretly taken of me in a local tavern in an obviously intoxicated condition. While it is unfortunate that this video could be made at all, it is even more unfortunate that this video was held until it could be released simultaneously with the untrue allegations of a disgruntled former city employee. As the embarrassment caused by this video has reached a critical state, I have paused to reflect upon why I sought the office of mayor. I have always believed and still believe that I, in concert with those aldermen who truly have the city's best interests at heart, could affect a positive change for our beloved city. Prior to my election, I had grown concerned over the political stalemate and acrimony that existed between this council and the office of the mayor. I felt that little positive for this city was being done. I asked the voters of this city to elect me as their mayor to get things done. I pledged to do all I could to create jobs, create new business, expand present business, and efficiently deliver city services and maintain or lower the, tech, the property tax burden on all of our residents. We were making remarkable progress when my abuse of alcohol interfered. I failed my family. I failed myself. I failed you, the Common Council. Especially, especially my good friend and supporter, Alderman Jim Bourne. I failed our city employees and I failed the residents of this proud city. I truly believe that everything in our lives happens for a reason and has a purpose. That there is a higher power that watches over us and allows us to fail for our own good. The recent video of me presents an image that is distorted that lacks clarity, and that is as unacceptable to me as it has been for all of you. While I have many imperfections, one that needs immediate discussion is my abuse of alcohol. Winston Churchill once said, always remember that I have taken more out of alcohol than alcohol has taken out of me. I must admit, that I had always admired that quote. 
not any longer. When one's abuse of alcohol impairs one's sensibilities, their thought process, and their perspective, then one must admit that they have a problem. When the abuse of alcohol affects one's reputation, hurts their wife, children, and family, demeans them in the eyes of their co-workers, friends, and the public, then one must admit that they have a problem. I am addressing my issues with alcohol head on. I am participating in a treatment program with full disclosure to the Common Council in order to assure them that alcohol will never again play a role in my future. I have many apologies to make to my wife and children. I am sorry for what I have done. I've been blessed with a beautiful, supportive, wonderful wife and beautiful children to whom I owe so much. My promise to you is to be the husband and the father that you justly deserve. To my family, I ask for your forgiveness for the embarrassment that I have caused you. You have always been there for me and continue to support me despite my shortcomings. To the Common Council, I am sorry for the embarrassment brought upon you and upon our city. To the citizens of Sheboygan, I truly regret my actions and the consequences for our city. I had always believed that I could be Mayor Ryan in an official capacity and Bob, the private citizen, when I decided to. I will never allow this to happen again. My future will be dedicated first to my family and second to the future of our city. Members of the Common Council, we desperately need to get back to the business that our residents deserve. For those of you who are truly committed to the future of Sheboygan, I ask you to join me in our efforts to again move this city forward. For those of you here who hear opportunity knocking, I ask that you please refrain from pursuing any personal agendas for political gain. This past April, I was elected to this office by nearly 60% of the voters. You elected me to chart a future for our city, and I can intend to continue to do just that. Resigning this office has never been and will never be an option. I have stumbled but I will not fall. I will never give up on myself. I will never give up on my family. And I will never give up on the future of this city. When I assumed the, mayor of the office of mayor, my first priority was to unite this council by assigning committee positions and chairmanships based upon fairness, experience, and ability. I did not allow politics or past allegiances, allegiances to play a role in these assignments. I ask that you, the Common Council, reunite with me in the common purpose of moving our city forward. With your assistance, I promise that I will become a much better person and that my past behavior will become an unfortunate historical footnote to what will be a profoundly positive and successful future for our city. Thank you. We will move on to the election of the Vice President of the Common Council, President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by closed ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. And will someone stand up and nominate a candidate? We need to 
Oh, all those in favor of opening up the vote, say aye. 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 Mm. Opposed? That motion carries. Do we have any nominations? We have Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> I would like to uh, nominate my fellow alderman in the 4th District, Joe Heideman. Second. We have a motion and a second. If I could just add a couple things, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> alderman Heideman and I go back to uh, early 2006 when I ran for alderman. And uh, I remember the first debate we had, I was highly impressed with Joe. Joe's the former member of Sheboygan Falls, and uh, he's done an outstanding job uh, uh, teaming with me in the 4th District for our constituents, and I highly recommend him to the rest of the council as vice president. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Do we have any other nominations? Alderman Rinfleisch? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I nominate uh, Jeremy Decker for vice presidency. Uh, as someone I think that can uh, do as you had just mentioned, bridge the gap, bring the uh, council together, all the factions. I have strong faith in the Jeremy's ability to do so. Do Thank we you. have a second? second? We have a motion and a second. Are there any other nominations from the floor? There are no other nominations. President Gisha? I move to close the nominations. Second. Motion and a second. Do we have to vote on that? Right, we're going to do a closed ballot. Okay, we will now do a closed ballot. First, we must vote on closing the nominations. Luckily, we don't have elections on this council every day. Second. <laughs> we have a motion to close and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ballots are closed. Alder Person Clyunas? Usually the, the clerk, uh, Madam Clerk, tells us how to write on the ballot. I was just <laughs> going to say that. Thank you. Um, on the ballot, because I can't, I'm sorry, I can't read all of your writing. Would you print your last name, sign it, and your vote is for on here? It will be a closed ballot. So thank you. Thanks, Alderman Clyunas. <laughs> Thank you. 
We have a new vice president of the City of Sheboygan Common Council. Congratulations, Vice President Heidemann. And if people didn't hear that because I didn't have my mic on at home, uh, we do have a new vice president, and it is Vice President Heidemann. Okay, we now uh, will go to uh, public forum. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this evening, we have five people speaking on public forum, and I would ask that you make your way up here. Be careful of the um, tripods that are over here, and you will have five minutes to speak with an additional one minute if you need it, okay? Uh, first on the list is Lee Montemayor. Lee, can I have your home address, please? My address is 1015 Logan, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, and, and you will... Before I start, I would like to have a question. I have a question for you and the mayor. Are we going to follow the rules of the, the set up in this basic rules for speaking in a public forum? As far as what are you speaking? Uh, you won't see it. Which rule are you... Uh, I don't know. I will obtain that from the mayor's office about four years ago, but we're still using the same rules. Yes, would you like me to read them? Yes, please. Okay, are you looking at basic rules? The whole thing. You want me to read the whole? I think it's, I think it's important because I see this. There was a political gathering outside this chamber, and I think it's, it's, it's it. So you want everything yes, second please. page also? Yes. Okay. Rules for the public. The public must remove all headwear while council is in session. All cell phones, pagers, or anything that makes noise should be turned off while council is in session. Public forum. The common council welcomes community input during its meetings. The public, pre public pre present at the meeting is required to remain silent during the council meeting. The mayor sets the tone for the council meetings and enforces all the rules. The mayor may call anyone out of order. In order to preserve order, the mayor may also have anyone who is out of order escorted out of the council chambers. In order to speak before the common council at the public forum, the public must first make a request to the city clerk. Up to five people are allowed to speak for up to five minutes during the forum. Any alderman may move to open the floor for one minute additional time. The council has a full agenda to follow, but may grant a person additional time to speak by majority vote. Basic rules, number one, before speaking, clearly state your name and address. Speak clearly, do not swear or use foul language. Address comments to all the persons, committees, etc. Do not be argumentative with presenters or department heads or representatives. Do not personally attack or criticize the mayor, all the persons, city officials, department heads, elected officials, or staff. Do not personally attack or criticize members of the public present at the meeting. Do not personally attack any members of the public, whether or not present, board members, committee members, employees, and the mayor. Maintain your composure and show respect to the chairperson and respective committee members. The Common Council receives citizen input and does not respond or debate issues with the public during the meeting. If there is a need for a response or answer to a question or concern, please make a request during your statement and the appropriate city official or employee will get back to you within a reasonable time. Is that enough? The next one is committees, boards, and commissions. No, you don't want that. Okay, you okay. will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna stick to city business, period, okay? I speak first as a taxpaying citizen of Sheboygan. About four years ago, 
a non-resident police officer stood at this very same podium and accused this government body of hurrying that night's agenda because of the Green Bay Packer Monday night football game. That was an assumption by, by the speaker and that was his opinion. Lee, I'm sorry, do you want to pull the mic a little bit towards you? People are saying that they can't hear you. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Uh, on September 21st of this year, eight aldermen of this council, the present council, did one better than that. They canceled a common council meeting because of a professional football game. That, to me, is like thumbing your noses at the very citizens who elected them to represent them to take care of city business. This type of legislation is unacceptable, and especially at this time of the year when you're supposed to be working on our city's yearly budget. Citizens who watch the televised council meetings are not able to join in the debate for such proceedings, but they watch the meetings live or during the numerous replays offered of the meetings. The reason given to change the meeting date for was self-serving by eight aldermen. The chair of this council could have shown his leadership by simply vetoing the resolution. I now speak as a transit commissioner. On, December, on September the 15th, 2009, <coughs> A transit meeting was canceled due to a lack of a quorum. There were three business citizens who were requested to be present at this meeting, and I had to apologize to the three business individuals and inform them that the absence of some of the commissioners was due to a golf outing. The three businessmen were very disappointed, irritated, and informed me that this was their busy part of the year, which is charter boat fishing, and they weren't very happy. I had to apologize for the second time. Case in point number two, the rejection of this council of 2.1 stimulus dollars awarded to the city of Sheboygan to be used to replace five obsolete buses The chair of this council explained the normal federal funding process of 80% of, by grants and the city paying 20% of the cost for our entire transit system. However, due to the 2.1 million awarded stimulus dollars, the entire cost of replacing the five obsolete buses would happen. In other words, 100% federally funded. How can we turn down $2.1 million, ladies and gentlemen? I ask you that. Our city supplies a transit system as a service that is used by students, elderly, handicapped, and other individuals. Ladies and gentlemen, not everybody rides in cars. Many depend on the bus for their transportation needs. I urge you to rescind your prior vote and accept the stimulus dollars. A rejection of federal monies may have far-reaching consequences that could affect other grant money applications requested yearly by the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Next on our list is Dimple Adams. Dimple, if you could Come up to the front podium, please. And oh, if you want to, there's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put the our microphone closer to you so that we can hear, is that okay? And then I need your home address. Pardon? I need your home address, please. Fourteen Twenty Four okay. Virginia Avenue. Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. 
Can you let me know when I'm like 30 seconds away? Sure. Thank you. Um, council members, Mayor, Attorney McLean and Susan Richards, our city clerk, I thank you very much for the opportunity of being here tonight. It's been a long time since I've spoke at Common Council, but um, I'm here tonight to speak about the current situation and about the resolution 1341 that's coming up tonight on your agenda. And that is asking our mayor, Bob Ryan, to resign. Um, you know, I've lived in Sheboygan for 33 years and I make it my hometown because I want to be here. It took me a long time to feel that way, maybe the first 10 years. But I raised my children here. They were seven and 12, and now they are 40 and 45. They graduated from South High School, and I've had grandchildren now that have graduated from South High, and one that is currently going to South High. So my roots have become very deep here. I've lived at Virginia Avenue, right off 14th Street, now, which is right in the heart of the city. It's right in the middle for the last 22 years. I love Sheboygan. I brag about Sheboygan all the time, okay? So this recent situation that we, brouhaha, that we have going on, I, uh, I just don't get it, folks. I don't get it. Let me read a couple of paragraphs in this resolution. Requesting that Bob Ryan resign because due to embarrassment, his recording actions have caused the residents. A video being made, I'm just scanning this, the comments to have become known regionally and nationally and the punchline. Well, you know, I don't get it. Bob did something that probably almost everyone in this room has done at some time or another in their life by going to a tavern and having some drinks. Did he drink too much? Yes, he did. Did he make a fool of himself? Yes, he did. Was he disrespectful to some family member? Yes, he was. Does that embarrass me? No. Does that embarrass you? No. Does it embarrass our wonderful city? No. It embarrasses Bob. And I call him Bob because I've known him a long time. And I happen to love Bob Ryan. And I worked very hard for him to get elected. And I haven't spoken to him since April, I've left him alone to do city business. And I love many of you that are on this council. And I've known some of you for many years. This bothers me a lot. This resolution, the last paragraph in this resolution says, resolved that the Sheboygan Common Council finds the recorded actions of Barbara Ryan offensive and not to the moral standards required for the office of mayor and respectfully request that he resign. People, since when? Look, I know what it is to put yourself out there to be a public servant. I've been there, I did that. I ran for alderman three years ago. I was crucified, absolutely crucified by the press and by some of the members of this council. But you don't give up. You do not elect people because of their moral standing. You elect people because of their honesty. Bob has not done anything illegal. Last night, the hypocrisy of all of this in the press today, 30 seconds they were talking about, thank you, they were talking about all the people that were at the taverns watching the Packer game last night, drinking shots 
A few days ago, that same press was calling for our mayor's resignation. I don't get it. You know, okay, he was on Jay Leno. You know, there's a lot of political people that have been on Jay Leno. That's not bad company to keep. There's a lot of political people Excuse that me. have done things wrong. Excuse me, Dimple. But I don't. One Your more five minute. minutes, are, Would you like another minute? Yes, thank you. I'm almost done. Alderman, I need somebody. So to tonight. Okay, go ahead, Dimple. So tonight, I placed on all your desk, or had someone place them, a little stone. And you know, I remember from years ago in Sunday school and everything that those without sin should cast the first stone. Well, I'm saying that if that's what we want to go down, the road that we want to go down, as you cast your stone tonight, if you vote yes on this resolution, then drop it off on Bob's desk. But if not, keep it in your pocket. And remember, we don't elect officials to be perfect. We elect them to be efficient. And that's what Bob has been. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list. Next Can, uh, on the list, please, oh, we sorry. please refrain from the applause. Thank you. Next on the list will be Mary Ryan. Mary, do you want to pull the mic up close to you when you speak? And then I need your home address, please. 1231 North 6th Street in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Thank you. And you mm -hmm. will have five minutes. Okay. I'm speaking to you tonight to accomplish two items. One, to reiterate my support for my husband, our mayor, and two, to thank the wonderful citizens of this city, my dear coworkers, friends, and family for their ongoing support. The last two weeks have been nothing short of a nightmare for me as I was forced to stand by and watch a small group of people feed the media with outright lies about my husband to advance their personal agenda against him. Their accusations could not be further from the truth. These ladies, along with a few others, have been working the media with a vengeance, spewing slanderous lies about a man I love dearly. I, better than anyone, know our mayor. He is my husband, and he is my best friend. I know everything about him, everything. Our mayor is truly the victim in this situation. He is being slandered day after day by this select group. They have taken it upon themselves to personally discredit him and try to tarnish the image of a good man with good intentions as your mayor, as my husband, and as my children's father. Aside from the fact that he is my husband, as a professional woman, I am disgusted by the fact that anyone would stoop to this level to imply such a serious offense such as sexual harassment exists in City Hall when it does not. It is despicable. All these lies and accusations with the sole purpose of hurting an innocent man. My husband is a gentleman with a heart of gold. He is intelligent and dedicated. He is genuine and caring. His heart is in this job. He is not in this for the paycheck. He's definitely not in this for the glory, if, if this is glory. He sought office of the mayor to offer his time and his talents to work as a team together with this council, city employees, and citizens alike to make a difference, to make our city better. He does not have a personal agenda. If ever there was a time to walk away and simply say, I give up, I'm thinking that time might be now. I'm sure you would not blame myself or my family. Why put our family through this personal attack of lies and accusations day after day after day? I will tell you why. My husband made a commitment to the citizens of this city, and I made a commitment along with my family to support him. We are not quitters. We know the truth, and that's what matters. We know that eventually good will come of all this distress and hard work, we also know that we have public support along with a higher being. We will get through this and learn many lessons along the way. That's what life is all about, guys. I, along with my husband, 
will focus on the positive. My husband has confronted his alcohol abuse and has taken control of that situation. Alcohol abuse is not a character flaw. Abuse of alcohol is a disease, a treatable disease, a disease that can invade the life of anyone. This disease does not pick and choose. It does not look for only the rich or only the poor, only men or only women. It does not discriminate. One who may have this disease is not weak. One who realizes that it caused a problem and addresses it head on is one of strength and determination. The choice to abstain from alcohol will prove to be very positive for our family and for this city. One day at a time, our family will fight this disease. Our mayor's drive and determination have never been stronger. Blake, Abigail, and I, along with our entire family, are so proud of Bob Ryan, our mayor. Finally, I would like to personally thank the citizens of this great city. You have seen through this well-orchestrated smear campaign that was underway, and you've stood by your mayor. You are willing to hold your judgment and allow the facts to be presented to you. I am so grateful to all of you for the heartwarming letters that you've been sending, the cards, the emails, the flowers, the donuts, the hugs and prayers. They've all been sent our way. Your support and prayers have meant more than you will ever know. On behalf of my family, I sincerely thank you for your support. Thank you, Mary. Next on the list would be Leslie Westover. If you could please come up to the front mic. And Leslie, can I have your home address, please? 1311 Ashland. Ashland Avenue? Right. Uh, it's W-E-S-T-O-V-E-R, correct? O-V-E-R. Yes. Okay, Mr. Westover, you will have five minutes. Uh, please give me the courtesy of a 30-second warning. I will do that. Thank you. You may go ahead. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council, honored and distinguished guests, I come to you today to talk about public transit. Uh, I have been riding public transit for 30 years. I used to have a car and a very high paying job and I used to never even think about public transit. But as my health got worse over the years, I started having blackouts when I would drive a car and obviously you cannot drive a car at any speed with a blackout. So therefore, whether I wanted to or not, I had to start riding public transit. At the time, I was living in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I have been a resident for the majority of my lifetime. I moved here a few years ago on, on a request by my doctor uh, for, uh, and for personal reasons. Uh, so I am not a native of your fair city, but I do feel that I have a vested interest in your city. Um, I would tell you that uh, years ago, about 30 years ago, I used to work for two Michigan senators and I was on Capitol Hill uh, much of the time, uh, pounding the flesh on Capitol Hill. Uh, I know a lot about federal government work, but I know nothing about city or state work. So pardon me if I break decorum here. But we used to use uh, Robert's Rules of Order for, for uh, speaking in the public domain. I hope that's what we're still using today. I've been out of politics for many decades, about three. So this is my first time really getting back in after about 30 years. Uh, I would really uh, encourage the council to reconsider a resolution of reconsideration for um, uh, a revote. Uh, to see if we can uh, definitely get that $2.1 million stimulus package. To tell you the truth, if I were an alderman or a council, back in Michigan we call them councilmen, we don't call them aldermen. But, um, so pardon me, but I'm going to use councilmen, I'm more used to that. Uh, but back home, if I were a councilman on, on the city council, and I thought that we had to spend $400,000, which would be 20% uh, copay, 
to get this 2.1 mil, I would vote it down too. But it's an absolute fact that it's 100%, just one time only, one time only, then it goes right back to 80-20 for every future grant that you apply for. Uh, why am I so passionate about getting the uh, 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 five chance buses out of here and get the long buses? I'll tell you why. It's because I could have sued the bus company and your fair city about, uh, oh, I don't know, about probably seven, eight years ago when I was riding on Route 5 South and we hit a huge bump and I happened to be stupid enough to sit on the back row seat, the very back seat. It threw my entire body up in the air and I ended up smashing my head into the ceiling of the bus and crushing my neck into my collarbone. For three days I was in horrendous pain, but I did not file an incident report which is mandatory by your bus drivers and by the city. I sucked it up like a man and took it like a man. And I went home and I kept my mouth shut because I love public transit and I need public transit. And there are blind people, deaf people, old people who cannot get out in, we don't have Florida weather that's 80 degrees in the wintertime. We have sub-zero temperatures. They cannot be standing out there freezing. We have to keep some form of public transportation. I would also offer this. We are paying on the average 10 cents per day per taxpayer for public transit. That's not a whole lot to ask. And come on, we get 80% of our money from the feds who I used to work for, with. Um, I do understand uh, Alderman uh, Gesha's conversation with me about an hour ago when I asked him you know, what the main reasons were for voting down the money. Um, and I understand his point of view, that, that even in the federal government, when you want to reform a bureauc bureaucratic system that seconds. is wrong, thank you. You're welcome. When you want to um, uh, fix a bureaucracy that's getting dysfunctional, you definitely cut their funds. And, and I understand cutting the funds for this 2.1 mil because you're trying to get a point across that we need to make it more efficient, better, more cost effective, yada, 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 yada. I, having had past political experience, offer my services to the city of Sheboygan pro bono for free. You can have me for as many hours or days or weeks Excuse that me. you want. Would you like your additional minute? I, Madam Secretary, I ask for my minute, please. Hold on just a second. A motion to grant okay. the additional minute. Second. All right. You may thank, go ahead. Thank you very much, Madam Secretary. I, uh, I would just say this in conclusion. You have my solemn word as a gentleman that, that the seven members who voted down that, that amendment, that if you will vote yes, if you will vote yes for that 2.1 to get those buses so that I don't have to ever look at the buses that nearly got me beat up you know, and killed on that thing and actually buy five new buses, I will promise you on a, on a gentleman's honor that I will work with you day in, day out, to streamline this system, make it better, cost efficient, give you every expertise I have. You have my solemn word on that. Thank you very much, Madam Secretary. Thank you. <clears throat> and last on our list is uh, Susan Lassard. And Susan, can I have your home address, please? My address is 5016 Menning Road, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor, Council, thank you for this opportunity. Being a taxpayer and a voter in Sheboygan, I'm afforded the opportunity to bring my thoughts and opinions to the Council. Susan, excuse me, could you put the mic a little bit closer to you? I'm like not good at this. Or tip it, maybe, there you go. Is that better? Can you hear? Yes. I'm sorry, if you want to start again, I'll restart. Thank you. Being a taxpayer and a voter in Sheboygan, I'm afforded the opportunity to bring my thoughts and opinions to the council. You work solely for the citizens of this fine city. 
You as older persons represent voters in each of your districts. You do not work on your own agenda, personal gain, or personal interest. You work for me and many others. I feel it important to remind you of this detail, which in the past has been forgotten. This is not a political forum. The voters clearly spoke this past election as to the direction we wanted our city to go work towards, and we clearly stated whom we wished to take us there. The bickering, the name calling, the poor leadership, and the inability to work as a team, it all ended with the last election. The exception, those who ran unopposed and were reelected on that merit. There will always be people who just need to deter us from the important matters that this city needs to address. Times are difficult within our city and the focus of this city should be business. Our agenda should not be diverted. That is in a perfect world. Sheboygan has been the brunt of the news media for some time now. We are all familiar with the past stories and now the current ones. The difference? All the past stories revolved around Mayor Ryan's predecessor and past older persons during their on-duty time, directly affecting our city and what was happening in it. It had everything to do with the business of Sheboygan. Our current media explosion is quite different, as it was on a personal level, and it had nothing whatever to do with the running of the city of Sheboygan. We have problems in this city with drugs, gangs, unemployment, budgets, deficits. It's so characteristic of the previous regime to divert these efforts and focus on personal vendettas. That's how they work, and that's why they're no longer in office. Once again, the exception of those who ran unopposed. I challenge all the media here, especially our news channels, to conduct an in-depth investigation of our current mayor's predecessor and his entourage. Not only will you find the answers to the many burning questions, you'll, but you will find the reasons that they're no longer in office. Previous exemption noted. During these very important times within our city, we need to stay focused and move diligently ahead. Let the reputable media investigate and the attorneys do their jobs. Sheboygan, be prepared for more of the same conduct from this group. Anyone is a target for them and they thrive on this behavior. In a recent Sheboygan blog, it was stated in part, we're going to let the dust settle and when you least expect it, we'll release another video. Can't wait until then. Before you, you have to make a stand on a, on a resolution brought forth to the council members, brought forth to the council by the members Montemayor and Rheinflesch. My question is to you, do you stand behind the business of Sheboygan and the work that has to be done and is continuing to be done? Or do you stand behind an intentional act to discredit our mayor with character assassination? My hope is that you stand on the merits of the work being done in the city and the plans for its future. My support lies there and in our mayor. With that being said, Council Member Montemayor, you are... We will call a point on that. Please refrain from mentioning names. There was a council member who was judging an action by a mayor on ethics and personal embarrassment to our city. You have personally commented in full knowledge of, in, of the camera as well as invited the media into the home, speaking for our city as alder person and not a private citizen. In the first interview, you stated that our mayor was a pig and that no woman would ever work for him. I find this more unethical and more embarrassing. Your actions did not speak for the city, nor did they speak for me, and I found it appalling. You have slandered our mayor and made implications that are unfounded. It is of my opinion your statements, however, were orchestrated in the plan that you and your group initiated to discredit our mayor and our fine city. Council members, you stated, a certain council member, you stated that you cannot work with our mayor which in case you have forgotten is part of your job. Your resignation will be welcomed and applauded. And Mayor Ryan, I accept your apology. As the damage from the preceding mayor and certain older persons are being repaired within our city, I've come to see a city working together for positive change. Departments are working together. There is a business interested in growth and relocation to our city. Our community is working together. Children are now interested in politics and how this... Susie, would you like your additional minute? May I please? Motion to allow additional minutes. Second. 
Go, you may go ahead. Thank you. Children are interested in politics and how the city can work under a man whose interests are in the city and not himself. Then once again, this preceding dysfunctional group raised its ugly head to create a diversion and character assassination that they are known for. Narcissistic in nature, venomous in speech, and working towards a direction of self-servience. Alder persons, your votes tonight will clearly state to the voters whom you represent, will it be getting on with the important business of our city or a witch hunt? We're watching. Thank you. Thank you. That will be the end of the public forum. Thank you, everybody, for speaking this evening. Uh, we now have a public hearing. This is a hearing for the proposed assessments for what the water lateral replacements in North 6th Street from New York Avenue to Niagara Avenue. Are there any interested persons wishing to be heard? Again, are there any interested persons wishing to be heard? On this subject, are there any interested persons wishing to be heard? President Gisha. Motion to close the hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is closed. On to the consent agenda. 13-1 through 13-23. President Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, pass all resolutions, and accept and adopt all RCs. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. No discussion? Yes. Roll call, please. Bauk. Aye. Bowers, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Koth, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Zurich, Vanderweel, Aye. Vu, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. and Boren. 16 ayes. Motion carries 1324 and 1325, communications and petitions to be referred. Reports of officers two, 1326 through 1339 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 13-40 by Alderman Boren, authorizing and directing the city assessor to convey the real property listing function as defined by Wisconsin statute, statute 70.09 to Sheboygan County, effective January 1, 2010. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Under discussion, uh, Mayor Ryan. Uh, the uh, city assessor, David Lutsky, is here tonight, and I would like to get, have him give a little more information to the council if we could open up the floor to Mr. Lutsky. Very good. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. City Assessor David Lutsky. Hello. Oh, hello. Um, really what this resolution is all about is right now the City Assessor's Office is in the process of working with the county to um, have one location for real property listing. Now, what that means really is real property listing is the legal uh, owners' names, addresses, and, and legal descriptions for all parcels within the city of Sheboygan. The county currently keeps track of all the um, owners' names, addresses, and legal descriptions for all other municipalities within the county, with the exception of the city of Sheboygan. Um, this has been going on for about 61 years. Um, I don't understand the history of it, but really what it comes down to is it creates a redundancy in the system which results in inefficiency. And um, so what this is, is the resolution is to formalize the idea of having the county do the same work that they do for all other municipalities for the city, and, and it enables us to standardize some of our processes. 
we're in the process of implementing a new software application, and our software application is for assessment, which means valuation. That's really the role of the assessor's office. It isn't to do real property listing. So um, to, to save taxpayer money um, and increase standardization, because all other municipalities also use the same software application we're installing, um, it just makes good sense for the taxpayer that we don't have these redundancies in the system and we standardize and institutionalize, institutionalize our practices. So the resolution is just really to kind of say, um, uh, this is what the city wants to do. Um, per statute, the county is actually supposed to do it. We've been kind of doing it, um, I guess, as a favor to them. And, and so what, it's trying to, what this does is it takes out the uncertainty for my department. In other words, we want to make sure that they really understand that they have to take on this duty um, and that we can drop the ball on it. Without something in writing, you know, we feel like, well, we're going to have to keep, keep hanging on to that ball because we want to make sure that this gets done. It's something that has to be done. So this kind of once and for all sets, casts, puts it and says, yes, this is what we wish to do per the state statute. Thank you. Uh, Dave, if you could hold on for a moment. Does anybody have any questions for the city assessor? Thank you, thank you, Mayor. First off, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for, uh, I, you've done a good job looking for redundancies before, and, and this is just another example, and I think we've spoken about this in the past, and it just makes common sense yes. to centralize things like this. So yes. I appreciate that, and I certainly understand the, the need to put it in writing and have the council behind it. So thanks for your hard work on okay. this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. We have uh, President Gisha. Dave, you're not off Thank the hook you. yet. Nice try, Dave. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you were this close, almost sorry. made the door. Uh, Dave, uh, if, uh, perhaps you can talk about the timeline on that briefly, but I think we also should thank the, and I know you've communicated this, this to me in the past, uh, thank you working with the county on putting this, this transition together. Uh, I know you've put a lot of time and effort into that, and. Those aren't always easy things to do. It's round peg, square hole kind of stuff. But I know I want to thank you for working with the county and coming to a resolution on a timeline that differs slightly, I think, from this resolution. Okay. Yeah, the timeline, um, assessment work is a snapshot in time. So in other words, our office values all the property as of January 1, and it's literally a snapshot um, until the next January 1. A lot of people will come in our office and say, hey, um, I bought this property. Can you reduce to reduce my assessment. Well, we can't. Statutorily, it's a snapshot as of January 1. Well, the timeline, and also with real property listing work, um, is very specific. Um, the county, what they will do then is they will give us what we would call a, uh, a working role. And what we are to do is, right now, we actually create the work role. We do in our department. Um, once the county takes it over, they will give us the work role, which is just a listing of owners' names, addresses, legal descriptions, and our role and our job is really to put the, the values on that. That's really all we do. Now, it, it sounds easy, but you know, there's almost 18,000 parcels in the city of Sheboygan, so there really is a lot of valuation that takes place. As far as the timeline is concerned, um, there's different things that happen to have, have at different times. It's actually quite detailed. And in the resolution, we've got some of that here. For example, it, would, it says beginning October 1st, 2010, and each year thereafter, an initial starting ro work role uh, for the upcoming year. This is what the county would provide for us. Additionally, a final starting work role no later than February 1st of each year. And then update, updated list of owners and mailing addresses on April 1st of each year. The reason for that is in the second Monday of May, the assessor's office is required statutorily to hold um, board of review. At board of review, citizens can come in and air their complaints, and it's in front of a board. Decisions are made at that time. After, after the board adjourns, which is usually one or two days, um, everything is set, and, it's, and, and even though it's the second Monday in May, it sets the uh, snapshot in time going back to January 1. For example, somebody may come in and, and say, well, they may um, argue their assessment, their assessment may be lowered. So it's, it still goes back retroactive to January 1. So it's different things happen to have, have to happen at different times. And the, all that information is spe spelled out in the resolution. Um, the resolution is kind of like, uh, you know, uh, if you've ever read the book Covey's uh, uh, Habits, the uh, 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 highly effective things to do. This is kind of beginning with the end in mind. We've got the ball rolling, but this is really where we want to be. Um, 
come the first of the year and subsequently thereafter. So what we're doing is working backwards from this document. And in that way, there's no, nobody uh, misunderstands what, what we really need to do. Because when working with the county, things can kind of sometimes get kind of unwielding because there's a lot of pieces and parts to it. And I also might add on this, as a result of this effort, parcel mapping, the city of Sheboygan has always done the parcel mapping. That is now in the process of going back to the county as well. So there's a lot more gains as a result of this project for the citizens of Sheboygan than really meets the eye or has been previously discussed. And again, there will be efficiency gains there because they already do that work. It was another redundant part of what we do. So this is really an incremental step in kind of looking at everything that we do in the city and, and trying to make it better for the citizens. Um, Dave, if, if I can ask one thing for us uh, uh, not so uh, uh, um, educated folks on this subject, uh, what type of money are you going to save by, by giving this to the county? Um, well, the proposal was um, I had made a request for software of $84,000, and I don't remember offhand what it is, but I know the payback originally was something like 16 or 17 months, which is a pretty good return. Um, and actually, it, I like to under-promise and over-deliver. So right now, I haven't spent the full amount of money, and I'm hoping that the return, I mean, the time frame, the payback will even come in sooner. I'm thinking it may even end up at 13 months. But the idea is that, you know, if we could get to the point where we can come up with ideas where we have a one-year return on investment, we can take those savings, roll it back into other ideas, and, and keep the ball rolling. You pretty well asked the same question I was going to ask. Any other questions? You're off the hook, Dave. Thank you. Um, yeah, if I may add, uh, uh, Dave Lutsky is, is a fine example of uh, allowing department heads to do their jobs. Um, the guy is, uh, uh, knows his job better than anybody does, and he took initiatives to uh, gain efficiencies in his department long before the council mandated it. And uh, I wish we had a lot more people like Dave out there. We have some great department heads, and I would like everybody to follow Dave's example. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Resolutions introduced. 13-41 by Alderman Rin, Alder Persons, Rinfleisch, and Montemayor requesting that Bob Ryan resign from the office of mayor of the city of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, due to the embarrassment of his recorded actions have caused the residents of Sheboygan and to the office he now holds. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion. Um, first, I'd like to say that I take no joy or pleasure out of being here this evening. I'm sure you don't either. Um, that um, the assumption that this is done for personal gain, political gain, or any such thing. Um, if anybody can find any tie to me to any group besides myself, I am here because of the people that have called me uh, and nothing else, the people that have contacted me. I would like to say that this resolution and my comments are only directed at the video of Mayor Bob Ryan showing him to be apparently <coughs> intoxicated and making lewd comments about a woman, his sister-in-law, which has appeared on YouTube. I will not use rumors or innuendo or discuss the Angela Payne issue as that is being dealt with completely separately with its own process. Furthermore, I would like to state what this resolution is not about. It is not about any claim that any of us have not made mistakes or will not make mistakes in the future. I thank Dipple Adams for reminding me of that, that lesson. It is not about forcibly removing the mayor from office, for the res resolution clearly states Wisconsin state statutes do not allow us to do so. It is also not a statement about the politics or policies of Mayor Bob Ryan or the work he has done. It only deals with the fact. And the fact is that the video, taken for whatever reason, has become known internationally. It cannot be taken back or hidden in the back closet. This resolution before us is nothing but a policy statement. A policy statement, however, that tells our constituents, the over 50,000 citizens of the city of Sheboygan, that we are listening to their concerns. And while there is actually very little we can do, 
We will go on record saying that we too were embarrassed and disgusted with what was said, and further embarrassed by the fact that once again, Sheboygan has become a national punchline to a joke that is only funny to those that live outside this great city. Mayor Ryan, it appears from your public comments that when you look at the video, you see yourself and you are embarrassed by what you have done. There are consequences that you must face and you are facing them head on. You have publicly apologized and asked for forgiveness from your family, the council, and the residents of Sheboygan, and have promised to never let it happen again. All of which are proper and good things to do, and I thank you for them. It will be up to each individual constituent that you represent, the 50,000 residents of Sheboygan, to decide to grant you forgiveness or not. It is not for me or anyone else in the council to say so on their behalf. To the council, Bob Ryan is dealing with the personal consequences of this video. This resolution, however, deals with the other consequences. For when I and many of the residents of Sheboygan that have called me when they have seen this video, we do not only see just Bob Ryan. Rather, we see a second person, the mayor, the chief representative of all of us here in Sheboygan, making lewd comments towards women and being intoxicated. There are consequences for the actions of that person as well. Unfortunately, while Bob Ryan is facing the personal consequences of his actions, it is the other citizens of the rest of us that must face the public consequences of the mayor and pay the price. The price to be paid is what we now know, is that we are now known for that video. I've heard several people on this council state that this video I have heard several people on this council state that this video and the impression it gives others that our city and, and our mayor are a joke will have no lasting consequences um, of those that may want to relocate or expand their business here. After all, business will go wherever they can make money. I wish that this incredibly simplistic view of our economy were that simple. If it were the case, the business world would already be here. After all, we have the infrastructure, we have the empty factories, we have a large amount of unemployed workforce that is desperate to get back to work and take pride for things they do. It would hardly cost the business a dime. Everything is ready to go. Unfortunately, as the experience with Thomas Industry shows, it does take money, and it's money that we, of the state, apparently do not have. If we did, then they would be moving jobs here instead of moving them to Louisiana. Make no mistake, we are in competition with every other city county, town, village, in Wisconsin, and every other state of the nation. We're in competition for every job. We are not alone trying to gain new businesses. So what will it take to gain those new businesses? It will take exactly what Bob Ramos promised in his campaign. It will take a mayor that is respected and be able to make a convinc convincing <coughs> sales pitch. The picture of business that might be interested in coming here, or perhaps to Milwaukee. The person they will meet there, Mayor Tom Barrett, has also been in the national news. But this was for getting severely hurt, trying to help others. Pretty nice impression. What impression does Sheboygan give when they meet our mayor? Say, weren't you the one on that video drunk and making that comment about your sister-in-law? <coughs> Business people also need to report to others, their bosses, their partners, their investors, their stockholders. All things equal, how can they defend to other people, to those people, for choosing Sheboygan over Milwaukee, when that video exists and defines who Sheboygan is? Perhaps it's far-fetched, but I do not think we're better off waiting and finding out if it's far-fetched or not, and waiting to see if a punchline that will not affect the ability of Sheboygan to create new jobs until it's too late. I believe it's better to act now. These are the consequences that we, the citizens of Sheboygan, and not Bob Ryan, must now face for the mayor's actions as recorded on that video. Furthermore, we must take action on behalf of the large amount of residents, mostly women, but not all, that have expressed to me their feelings of disgust when contemplating having a mayor that would make these kind of comments towards a sister-in-law. A common statement to me was, if he thinks this way about a family member, how can the mayor represent me, a woman he doesn't even know? Will he respect me? We need to express our dissatisfaction in the strongest terms for the benefit of those people. This is why, fellow council members, and only why, just for the reasons I've stated, that I ask you to pass this resolution. It is the first step in regaining our dignity for us as a council and for all of Sheboygan. I, too, wish this to be an unfortunate historical footnote. However, I feel this resolution is the best way to do so. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Alderman Bob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oops. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I scratched down some thoughts here. 
Um, this is a very ill-advised resolution from the beginning. Um, it was formed before critical legal facts were shared with us in closed session. Critical legal facts that indicated how just even discussing this in public uh, puts us at legal risk with the ongoing potential legal situation we find it in, which, again, I, I believe is completely unrelated to this. Um, and it was blustered about in the press before those critical facts were shared. So it's a very ill-advised resolution, purely from a tactical standpoint on whether it'll pass tonight to, uh, or not. Um, leadership is a game of chess. Leadership is not a game of, I'm going to make my move uh, and, and live with that move, because everything you do has consequences three and four moves down the line. And this resolution is ill-advised because leadership is a game of chess. This move tonight, if we, if we were to pass this tonight, the impact on us, three and four legal moves down the road, devastating to the city. It's a very short-sighted resolution. Um, if the purpose of this resolution is to get us on record, <coughs> declaring whether or not we're embarrassed by Bob's actions, then it's also a very poorly crafted resolution because Mayor Ryan has said he is not resigning. That's one. Two, we don't have the statutory authority as it sits right now. We don't have the statutory authority to pull him out of office if we wanted to. It doesn't rise to that occasion. So it's a very, very uh, ill-advised resolution because it can't possibly achieve what it hopes to achieve. Um, and just to get me on the record, I'm neither for or against Bob Ryan. I am for the city of Sheboygan. We are right now potentially liable in a legal case against this city. And everything we say tonight will potentially work against us in that ongoing legal case, which is which I've already mentioned why that's bad. That hurts Sheboygan. That doesn't hurt Bob Ryan. He's not going to resign. We talked about that. And we don't have the statutory authority to remove him. Talking about that hurts Sheboygan. It doesn't hurt Bob Ryan. Uh, number three, we're engaged in a very serious work of negotiating budgets and labor union contracts that are going to cost every one of you hundreds and hundreds of dollars if we screw it up. This is a huge distraction that hurts Sheboygan not Bob Ryan. And finally, the chaos, and I don't use that word lightly, the chaos that a temporarily assigned lame duck mayor, uh, whoever it would be, the chaos that would cause in that negotiation period and um, uh, the budgeting process, again, puts all of you at budgetary risk, all of your pocketbooks at risk. Not Bob Ryan, he can afford it if, if the taxes go up a couple hundred bucks. So. Um, if this were not a political declaration, if this were not an attempt to get us to declare we're either with Bob Ryan or against Bob Ryan, it would be crafted the way it should be, which is a censure, which is what this body can and should do. If we want to declare our embarrassment of Bob Ryan's action on video, then we should craft a document that does what we as a legislative body have the authority to do right now, and that is speak with one voice that speaks to censure, which is what this probably deserves. Uh, and I would support that resolution if it went to uh, Chairperson Kleinus' committee of the whole. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Buck. We next have President Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I can't read my own writing, so I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> um, Alderman Bauck said it extremely well. Actually, one of the things he probably should have noted was scarier than the future that Alderperson Reinflesch uh, discussed would be the fact of me sitting in that chair, frankly. <laughs> there should be some fear about that. Uh, at least there is on my end. None of us thought we'd be sitting here today. There's been a lot of things happening over the last couple of weeks. And I echo a lot of the feelings of what we all witnessed on this tape. Mayor Ryan, you know you and I have had very frank conversations over the last few weeks, and I've appreciated that, and I think you've been honest and forthright, and a lot of what you have said to me and to others, I assume, were contained in your statement this morning. It's not an easy conclusion to come to for any individual, so I, I do appreciate that. You know, we solve problems in this room. That's what we do. It might be putting up a, a no parking sign. It might be plowing the snow. It might be somebody wanting a variance for their property, dealing with their neighbor. We solve problems. 
Document 1341 doesn't solve our problem. It turns tomorrow into the same day as today. The mayor says he's not going to resign. We say, resign. I'm not going to resign. It becomes the movie Groundhog Day, where every day is the same that we wake up. We do not move forward. We solve problems in this room and move the city forward. Voting for this makes every day what we've seen for the last two weeks on TV, newspaper, and radio. Now, how does that move the city forward, and how does that solve the problems of our constituents? Alderman Bauck said it very well regarding our budget issues and our contract labor negotiations. Um, those are big issues. I am not taking away the fact that this was and is an issue that affected residents of the city of Sheboygan. It did. And, and I do not shy away from the criticism of those actions. Do not misunderstand that. However, doing this perpetuates the stalemate that we're all dealing with in our committees, in our departments, in all our, uh, our doings and dealings with the city. That is not why we're in this room. We're in this room to solve problems and to move this city forward. Alderman Bauck mentioned censure. That is the appropriate measure that we have. It is appropriate via statute and historical precedent. And I pledge to bring in at the next, meet, next council meeting a resolution of censure for the mayor. And I'd like to present that idea to you, Mayor. If you have further comments on that, I would appreciate that. There are consequences. If, if, I, if I may interrupt. Certainly. Um, I, I believe that you know, my, my, my actions should not go without consequence. And I would accept freely uh, a censure by this council. I would waive any right to a quasi-judicial hearing. I would waive my rights to that. I will accept it. As the gentleman said here earlier, I will take it like a man. And we will move this city forward. If I may continue the floor, Mayor please, Ryan. Please you. do. Uh, in light of those comments, I would say that waiving one's rights is not something the council or the community should treat as a, as a trifle. That's a big deal. And uh, the quasi-judicial hearing on a censure could have wrapped up this council for weeks and weeks. And, and that is and why weeks. I've decided that in order to move things forward, um, I would like to expedite that process. We have business to take care of in this city. And dragging this matter out for another month or two is, is not going to be beneficial. I would uh, pledge to bring in uh, at the next council meeting a, a uh, resolution of censure. Anyone in, else interested in that, certainly uh, feel free to contact me so that we can do what we're supposed to be doing in this room, and that's solving problems and moving forward. And this is a reasonable way to solve what is a community-wide problem, perhaps a national problem. We, we move forward. We move forward for our citizens because doing, voting yes on this, which I will vote no on, voting yes on this does nothing but make tomorrow the same as today. Thank you. Thank you, President Gisha. Next we have Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, obviously, I've thought long and hard about about this, and I, and I took Alderman uh, Bauck's uh, comments to, tonight to heart. Uh, I too believe the appropriate course of action is to is to move forward with the censure. I think Bob has committed himself to his family. He's committed himself to the city. I know he can't say it publicly, but I know he's committed himself to his church. Uh, so I know Bob's working very hard uh, to get better. And at this point, I think, as a collective body, our role uh, is to be moving the city forward during a critical time. Uh, Center is the appropriate. I would actually challenge President Gisher to perhaps even schedule a meeting before the next regular scheduled um, council meeting. I think we can all make time in our schedules to get this done. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Next, we have Alderman Wangerman.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Many have got up and talked about the weaknesses that were exhibited here. And I take issue with that. I think they're not weaknesses. What we've seen is a demonstration of strength and character. Make no mistake about it, it's nothing more difficult than to sit in front of a body like this and the TV world and everybody that's listening and admit your deepest faults. To me, that doesn't indicate weakness, that indicates to me a strength of character. A weak man would sit there and alibi and come up with all kinds of things and blame it on everybody else. As many of you know, I spent a lot of years on the police department and very seldom when we arrested somebody, did we ever hear them say, it's all my fault, I did it, it was always somebody else did it, it was this, it was that. It, it wasn't, uh, you know, my, my, my doing. But I wanted to thank you and congratulate you for demonstrating to us that you have a strength of character that is truly remarkable and that you have the ability and the right to lead this city in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Waterman. Next we have Alderman Boren. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I don't think there's probably anybody that's worked, worked closer than me with you the last six months, uh, Mayor Ryan. We've had scheduled meetings as early as six in the morning and at eight at night. And I have to say, you've been doing an outstanding job for the city. As I said in the paper, from eight o'clock in the morning until, well, those meetings that maybe lasted until nine o'clock, but usually your schedule is from eight to five. <clears throat> and I take you at your word <coughs> that you're gonna take care of your alcohol problem. And uh, uh, I want you to follow through on that. I've had a number, of, a number of phone calls. Last Sunday when I was at church, they all know I'm an alderman. I was approached by eight or nine people. And I can honestly say that none of the people thought that your activity, which I've used all the actions to describe it also, despicable and whatever else we want to say about it, <clears throat> none of the people at my church said that it rose to the, to the level that you should be removed from office. They, uh, first of all, they used all the adjectives. They said, obviously, Mayor Ryan has a problem with alcohol. He should get help for it. They expressed... Uh, a lot of sympathy for your family, Bob. And uh, the people that I've been getting calls from on the telephone, uh, it's been mostly like the people at my church. And for those people that I got telephone calls from that want you removed from office, uh, I do not believe what you did at that tavern ra uh, rises to that level, regardless how we feel about the activity. So therefore, uh, again, I respect their opinions for the people that I've, that I've talked to that said you should be removed from office or resign. Uh, I'm not going to support this resolution. Uh, uh, I know you're going to redouble your efforts for the city, and I look forward to continue working with you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. <coughs> Alderman Bob. One last thing, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I keep a picture of Atticus Finch on my desk here because he is what I, uh, what I hope to be, calm, cool, and collected, but all about the facts. And um, if I exhibit passion tonight, it's not anger, it's passion. It's passion to do what's right for the city. Um, I want to be clear that I don't question the motives of the people that brought this resolution forward. I believe they are doing it for what they think is, uh, is the right reasons. Um, I'll share something else with, this, with the public that, that we all experience that maybe they don't. Um, we didn't do anything to deserve this either. We didn't behave in any of this way, but all 16 of us have had our lives turned upside down over the past couple of weeks as well. And I'm not whining about that, I'm just saying, there's more that goes on behind the scenes of running this city than, than you'd probably expect. And so, I don't question the people who brought these, this resolution forth. I don't question their motives, because I think they were doing the, they thought they were doing the right thing. I, I just think they came to the wrong conclusion. So in the blogs tomorrow and in the press tomorrow, I don't wanna hear anything about, you know, all of us said bad things about each other. We, we just, I just think they came to the wrong conclusion. And because of that, I can't vote for this tonight, and I urge you to vote against it as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you again, Alderman Bauck. Any further discussion? Here we have a roll call, please. Everybody clear on their voting? I will. Um, and I vote would be to support um, requesting that the mayor resign from office. A nay vote would be to vote that down. 
Everybody understand that? Okay. Decker? Aye. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. Koth? Nay. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Vu? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? No. And Bowers? No. Five eyes, 11 no's. Motion fails. 13 42 by Elder Persons Gisha, Clyunas, Boren, Montemayor, and Heidemann, establishing the 2010 budget calendar. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the. Hold on. What I would do is let the cameras Okay. If we can just uh, hold off and. Very good. Uh, let the cameras exit that may want to uh, may want to leave. There's more exciting stuff to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have a sewer issue. <laughs> I don't think we need a recess. We'll be done here in a couple moments. If we don't need a recess. Please sit down. Okay, President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, everyone in the back is, is kind of the rundown uh, regarding the, uh, the budget dates and targets. Um, it's, fairly, it's fairly tight. It's different than last year, but a lot of pre-leg work has been done. That was, we discussed this in the Finance Committee meeting. Uh, if there's any question regarding any of these steps, Terry Hansen would be happy to, to fill you in as to where he are, is at this point and where they are in the budget process. I know there's been a ton of work done ahead of time, Mayor Ryan. I think you can uh, attest to that. And uh, just wanted to state that it is tight, but it's very doable. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you. For those involved with the um, scheduling, is there a particular uh, way that perhaps November 30th they can be moved up a day? I know we have very extreme tightly dates on that one. Um, I will let uh, Finance Director Hansen speak on that. And what was the question then, Alderman? I'm sorry. Um, would it be possible to move the November 30th dates for the council meeting to the 29th? Is there a particular reason it has to be on that Friday? I'm afraid that people watching on TV may be out of town for the weekend or okay, I Friday thought that, instead of a Monday or a, a usual day. Is okay. the 30th a Monday? I thought the 30th um, was a Monday. I don't have a calendar in front of me, but I thought the 30th was a Monday. It's a Monday. It's a Monday. I stand corrected. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Terry. Right, right. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 13 43 through 13 46 to be referred. Reports of committees. Five thirteen 47 by Public Protection and Safety making a favorable recommendation to the Council regarding the adopted resolution from Sheboygan County regarding supporting the concept of combined dispatch and entering negotiations with the City for a Communications Center Dispatch Manager. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second under discussion? This just moves the issue forward. Uh, everybody's planning on, on funding late in 2010. It just keeps the dialogue moving. 
Uh, it's real good. The county and the city are working very well together. Uh, been on that shared services committee for several years. I think uh, it's firing all cylinders. So I'm real pleased. And that is a committee moving at the speed of light. No doubt. Alder Person Clayonis. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much. This is an important committee, and if you don't support that, you would be very detrimental to it happening. So thank you very much for doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 6, 13-48, by Law and Licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license application number 8361. Based on his failure to include all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Under discussion, Mayor Ryan, is Roger Bartz here tonight? He's not here. Very good. Uh, Mr. Bartz had uh, two opportunities to appear before our committee, one by certified letter. He did not do so. And for the reasons that you mentioned above, the committee unanimously voted not to grant the license. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wankeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 13-49 by law and licensing. Recommending denying beverage operators license Application number 8355, based on his failure to include all the relevant convictions on his application and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Boren. Thank you again, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Under discussion? Under discussion, Mayor, uh, is Paul A. Bratz here tonight? <coughs> He's not here, Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Bratz also had two opportunities before to re to appear before our committee, the second one by certified mail. He did not appear, and uh, based on the re reasons that you stated before, uh, the committee voted unanimously not to grant the license. Thank you. Any further discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Heidemann. <coughs> excuse me. Heidemann. Aye. Koff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Bowers, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 8, 13-50, by finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2009 budget. Estimated revenue and appropriations for Western Interceptor Project from unreserved returned earnings. President Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I move to accept and adopt the RC and pass the resolution, put the resolution upon its passage. Pardon second. me. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Just real quickly, we had a fairly complicated uh, um, uh, presentation by Director Bittner uh, uh, regarding the funding mechanism for this and how we're just a partner in this. We have all these other communities that, that play a role in it and the formulas having to do with it. And uh, if anybody I know it's sewage, but it's kind of interesting how this all kind of comes together from a financial standpoint. If anyone has interest in that, Director Bittner or Terry Hansen would be happy to, to fill them in <coughs> if they have future interest in the topic. What do you mean by I know it's sewage? Well, it's sewage. <laughs> <laughs> Not that much exciting of a topic. Thank you, President Gisha. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. And Heidemann. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances, ordinances introduced 10, 
1351 and 1352 lie over. Matters laid over 11. Oh, excuse me, Alderman Bob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would ask that uh, 1351 be referred back to salary and grievances. We have a little tweaking on that one to do. Uh, we need to sit down with uh, uh, Director Hansen uh, and Director Bittner and, and okay. have a little bit more conversation. A motion to refer back to salary and grievances. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Back it goes. Okay. Um, okay, matters laid over 11. 12-35, resolution number 86-09-10 by Alderman Hanna, authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for the purchase of one 2010 model Ford Crown Victoria Interceptor squad car for use by a K-9 patrol officer. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? No discussion. Roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? 16 ayes. Motion carries. 12-36, resolution number 87-09-10 by Alderman Vu, appointing seven members to the complete count committee authorized by resolution number 225-08-09. Alderman Vu. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Um, I would like to to move to amend for the numbers of the members because it says a seven members. I counted eight members there. There are so eight like members. Yep. Good we catch. have a motion to amend. Do we have a second? Second. Good catch. We have a motion and a second to amend from seven members of the complete count committee to eight members. On the amendment only under discussion. Alderman Bowers, are you in on the amendment, or would you like to speak on the? Uh, speak on the original. Okay, uh, this is on the amendment only. No further discussion on the amendment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Amendment carries. Okay, now uh, Alderman Vu, do you have anything else? I think that's about it. I have nothing okay. else. So, I like to to have the. Uh, Resolution put upon its passage. As amended. As amended. Thank you. Okay. Uh, resolution to put it upon its passage as amended with a second under discussion. Alderman Bowers. Um, thank you, Mayor. What are we voting on here? The complete count committee? What is? What uh, the is complete count committee is, a, uh, is uh, the first step in the census. We have a uh, census coming up in the summer of 2010, which we have to organize. Um, we have to, uh, to basically uh, hire people to do the census. We have to get word out in all of our communities of how important it is to be counted. Uh, a little quip I made uh, when uh, I actually introduced this the first time about getting the census going was, if, you, if you're not counted, you don't count. Um, it's very important that all of our citizens get counted. All of our funding, uh, a lot of state and federal funding is based upon our population. And if we have people living here, that aren't counted, obviously, it's very important that they are. So that is, that is this is the first step in, uh, in uh, going forward with our census. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rittenfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wankaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Koth, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Resolution number 88-09-10 by Alderpersons Gisha, Clionis, Montemayor, Heidemann, and Boren authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2009 budget, establishing revenue and appropriation for donation received for volleyball nets at the South Beach and for funds received for crime prevention. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? 
No discussion. Roll call, please. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sirk. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Wankerman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauch. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kath. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Clayunas. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, other matters authorized by law? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. First of all, um, this is uh, Ron McDonald okay with this, this going to finance? Yes. Um, yes, it's going to finance, and there's a joint commit, joint meeting? Yes. Of finance and? Transit. And okay. transit. Okay, the timing of yes. it. Okay. okay. That's going to be a joint meeting. <coughs> it's Steve. 1350. Uh, Steve first. Steve first. That's why I called him. <laughs> 1353 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2010 and June 30, 2011. Now oh, you made me lose my stack here. That goes to law and licensing. 1354 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Danny Beeman filing an appeal to the sex offender residency ordinance. That will go to Alderman Hanna and public protection and safety. 1355 is submitting communication from the State of Wisconsin Department of Corrections to file an appeal to the Sex Offender Residency Ordinance on behalf of David Kelly. And that will also go to Alderman Hanna and pp &S. 1356 is a communication from the State of Wisconsin Department of Corrections to file an appeal to the Sex Offender Residency Ordinance on behalf of Cecil Webster. And that will also go to Public Protection and Safety. 1358 is an ordinance relating to 30-minute limits so as to change the parking limits on the east side of North 9th Street from Center Avenue to 87 feet north. That will go to Alderman Hanna and Public Protection and Safety. 1358 is a communication from Habish Habish and Rotier SC and South Pier District 1 LLC requesting an encroachment at 1011 South 8th Street for the purpose of installing and maintaining a sign at that location. That will go to City Planning. 1359 is an ordinance granting South Pier District 1 LLC its successors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of South Pier Drive located at 1011 South A Street in the city for the purpose of constructing and maintaining a sign. And that will also go to city planning. Okay. Gisher. President Gisher. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Here's something that doesn't happen very often. This is, uh, I'd like to make a motion to discharge the Finance Committee regarding um, RO, the two ROs that are mentioned, 223.09.10 and 9309.10. Second. We have a motion and a second. If I may, uh, this item was in the Finance Committee. We held it because of some confusion regarding whether that was an estoppel letter or they were encumbering the land and so forth, and I understand there's some uh, there's some uh, need for speed regarding a refinance of this property for our, our citizen owner. And uh, Attorney McLean could explain maybe to the Finance Committee and the members' uh, satisfaction regarding what we're doing. Alderman Gisha, can we get a, a vote just on this motion first before we go into that? The motion to discharge? Yeah. On the motion to discharge, is this the uh, roll? Uh, let's do oh. a roll. We'll do a roll call on this, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Vu, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Bauk, Bowers, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kath, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, and Montemayor. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. If I may now, uh, Your Honor, uh, make a motion to accept and file the RO, or RO rather, and pass the resolution, and Attorney McLean will further explain. Attorney McLean? We need oh, we need a second on that, please. Second. Attorney McLean. Uh, Harper Winds Hotel is refinancing their uh, financing on the hotel down on the riverfront. And uh, under our lease with, uh, with them, um, they, can, they can do that subject to our consent. The council has the uh, uh, ability to grant consent for that assignment. And in fact, they require our consent for the assignment. Uh, basically, it's just 
a re <coughs> refinancing by Harbor Winds Hotel. Uh, Harbor Winds has a ground lease on the site. Uh, the, the ground lease, uh, less tenant has a mortgage. This would be a, uh, an assigned mortgage on the, on the leasehold interest. It's not any transfer of the fee interest. The city still has the fee interest. Uh, these mortgages are subject to the city's lease. And uh, there is a time concern. I know uh, the zippers were interested in having this closed a couple weeks ago, but the process was for it to go to committee. So if there are any questions, if you feel free to ask. Any questions, Alderman Bowers? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, since this outfit leases the property, has there been any negotiations with them to buy the property? Very valuable property. I would assume it's worth uh, maybe a million dollars. They haven't made any such request. And uh, How this about us requesting them? Um, can we do that? If I, if I can give a little background on that, uh, being on, on redevelopment for, for many years um, and still taking a great interest in that committee, um, we have run, um, we have set up a formula that we can, can sell uh, the dirt on, on these river, riverfront and uh, South Pier properties. Uh, it was basically the rule of the city in the past that we would not sell any of the dirt, but to tell you the truth, uh, we're not very good landlords. We have a hard time reviewing our leases. We have a hard time renegotiating leases. And so we do have the mechanism in place uh, that if property owners want to buy their property, which makes it a heck of a lot easier for them to finance, especially individual condominiums, et cetera, that we can do that. Now, these individuals um, obviously have not, uh, have not asked that. And I'm sure right now they just need an expedient process to get done what they need to get done. But that is going to be an option in the future for all property owners uh, up and down the river. So I take it we are not giving up any rights by, by signing this so that uh, uh, there will be something in the contract that uh, they do not own the land? That, that's McQuay. right, it's a ground lease. All right. Harbor, uh, Harbor Pride LLC is actually the assignee of, this was the former Daryl Mann property uh, First Star Bank foreclosed on the Daryl Mann's interests in three parcels um, because they had a mortgage on the leasehold interest. Uh, they foreclosed on the leasehold interest. We still own the fee. Uh, First Star Bank then requested the council to separate out that larger parcel into three separate pieces, which the council agreed to do, provided the leases all remained exactly the same as they had been originally with Daryl Mann. That was done and uh, First Star Bank then subsequently assigned their interest uh, in the leases, uh, one to the Harbor Pride LLC for the hotel. Uh, Priority Signs got lease on, I think the other two now, it used to be uh, Dan Wilson had one in the center, I believe. but. Uh, Yes, uh, this won't affect nope. the city's ownership interest in the property. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Hanna? Yeah, just, just by way of some more background, because Bob and I both took an interest in, in the selling of the land down there. Originally, it made sense for us to control it when we had to deal with environmental issues, but you're absolutely right. As opportunities come up and we can sell that land, that's the right thing to do. And, and then those funds will be basically be put back into block grant funding um, for uh, for reloaning, re revolving block grant funds, et cetera, exactly. which uh, can only do uh, good for the city. Thank you, Mark. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Sirk. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Bourne. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Kittleson, Clayness, <clears throat> excuse me, Montemayor, aye. and Rinfleisch. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Before we adjourn, um, and I'm glad all the, uh, all the cameras are gone.
because this isn't meant for the cameras. This is meant for, for everybody in this council chamber. Uh, I was asked a lot of times over the last few weeks, why do you do what you do? You know, why would you put up with it? Why do you do? And I'm sure a lot of you have been asked the same thing, and a lot of us has, has, have asked ourselves the same thing. Why do we do what we do? There's no glory in it. There's no money in it. Why do we do it? I mean, I had a time where I actually wondered, why, why, why am I doing what I'm doing? Um, and uh, somebody dropped this off as, at my office. And uh, I, I thank them for it. Um, but I think it's, it's fitting. This is a quote by former president of ours called Theodore Roosevelt. And I framed it, and it's up on my office wall. But it says, it is not the critic that counts. Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Theodore Roosevelt. That's why we do what we do. Let's not forget that. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So Second. We are adjourned. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.